All right. Well, today uh, we're going to be talking about the Bible. Um, this is the first, um, the first of, of twelve lessons um, for the Growing in Christ Discipleship and uh, New Member course. Um, it's been uh, people have asked me who is this class for, and we specifically wrote it to be of benefit to anyone. Um, if you are uh, getting off of drugs, it, you're going to find a lot of good application. If um, if you've been saved for a long time, you're going to find find some stuff that maybe challenges you in new areas. Um, and uh, so in, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at um, the Bible. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, how do we know? There is a God, and also related with this question is, is how do we know who he is? I don't know where to put this thing. How do we know there is a God, and how do we, how do we know who, who this God is? Well, the first answer is what's called general revelation. Now, and basically, whenever somebody talks about general revelation, they're, they're talking about... Um, nature, the, the things that are created around us, um, the things you go outside and you look, and, and our conscience, us, the fact that we exist, these are things that people call, that theologians call general revelation. Um, it, it, it points us to the fact that there is a God somewhere. Some, someone out there is, is, is a God. So, Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Um, and then he goes on to say in 2.14-15, through 15, For when Gentiles who do not have the law do instinctively the things of the law, these, not having the law, are a law to themselves, and that they show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness and their thoughts alternately accusing girls defending them. Um, and I'll stop there. So this is this is general revelation. The fact that we can know that, 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 there, that there is a God. Um, the world created things, our conscience, the, the fact of, I know a lot of people have you know really taken this pretty far, uh, morality, um, beauty, that kind of stuff. And we'll, we'll get to that in, in the um, the third lesson, um, but just throwing that out there. Just think about that. Um, but then the second one is is actually, for our purpose, it's a little bit more beneficial for us. This is called special revelation, and it basically answers the question, so who is God? Just knowing that there is a God doesn't really accomplish that much in your life. Excuse me. Um, but knowing who God is, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're able, excuse me, <clears throat> now we're able to know how to serve this God, who this God is. Um, and this is directly related to the question that people ask, does it matter which God I serve? Basically, I mean, aren't they all the same? And this is related to that. And uh, we may get into that some other time. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, the first of the special revelation is Jesus Christ, the living Word of God. Um, John 1, 1 through 2, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. <clears throat> and uh, the second form of special revelation is, is the Bible, um, which is the written Word of God. Um, let me read a few more verses here um, about the living word, Jesus. Uh, Hebrews 1, 1 through 2 says, uh, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in, in, um, in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Now when it says uh, prophets um, spoke long ago to the Fathers and the prophets. He's not just talking about um, the prophets as we call the major and minor prophets in the Old Testament. He's actually talking about all of the Old Testament um, because they they viewed that um, 
that the people who wrote the Old Testament were prophets. Um, Moses was considered a prophet. Um, obviously, Samuel and his disciples were considered prophets. Um, the, whoever wrote First and Second Kings, they were considered a prophet. Um, so, uh, but we talk more about that in the Old Testament class if you're interested in, in elaborating a little bit more on that. Um, he is, and he is the radiance of his glory, going on in verse three. Um, and the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. Okay, and then the Bible, which is the written word of God, 2 Timothy uh, 3.16, says, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And then, in St. Peter 1.20, and remember, at this time, the Bible that they had was the Old Testament scriptures. Um, it wasn't the New Testament that we have. Um, St. Peter... Um, 1, 20 through 21. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so those are just, just some proofs of how we uh, how do we know there's a God and, 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 and uh, who is this God? Um Obviously, we start to see that the Bible is very important um, for the life of the Christian. Um, here's a little analogy that I think really um, hits the nail on the head. Imagine walking through an unfamiliar forest in the middle of night with no stars or moon out. What do you need? Some people would answer flashlights. Some people would answer um, some kind of a GPS or a phone. Um, some people would ask, well, a map and, you know, just sleep until the morning or whatever. That is what the Bible is. The Bible is a light for that path. The Bible is the GPS that gets you where you need to go. It guides you through life's uncertainties. It, it, it gives you that, that direction and guidance. Apart from it, when you don't read the Bible, you just start making stuff up. Um, and this happened, um, you know, Throughout church history, one example, you know, church, the church kind of started to back off and, and shut down their, their minds. Um, and so as a result, in the 1800s, um, there were a few very bad holes, let's just say, in Christianity. Um, and from those holes, different cults were started. Mormonism was started in the 1800s. Jehovah's Witness was started in the 1800s. These, these are things that had far-reaching implications um, because people weren't reading the Bible, they weren't understanding the Bible, the, the church itself had, you know, like I said, very big loopholes in what they were teaching and, and, and doing. Um, and so as a result, people made stuff up. And uh, that's what happens when you don't stay in the Word. Uh, you don't have, you look for some special revelation, some some light from above, so, you know, this, the, this special um, angel light from heaven moment, when the truth is the, the Lord has already spoken to you in his word. If you'll be faithful and diligent to study it, um, it will it will speak to you. But you got to stay in the word. So, the Bible is God's all-sufficient guide for faith and daily living. I, I kind of want to say that again, just in case um, you, you weren't really listening to what I said. It is God's all-sufficient guide for faith and daily living. How do you know what to believe? Uh, in many cases, it even says why you should believe it. Um, not all the time, but, you know, definitely, um, definitely a good deal of the time. Um, Psalm 119, verse uh, 105 says, um, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So it is also how God most often reveals his plans and purposes. It's God's very words. This is, this is, this is what he wanted you to know. Think of it as a love letter almost. You know, let's say, you know, your lover gives you this letter and you just let it sit there. Well, you know, 
you'll never know that much more about that that person, you know. And and, and but but with what we have with this is is we have God revealing Himself, trying to pull people in a deeper relationship with Him by giving them revelation. So, um, you know, when when we fell in the Garden of Eden, we became sinful. And sin entered into our minds and into our thought processes as the world around us was corrupted and as, as the world around us falls to disrepair. And so out through the course of time, as you can figure, you know, time separates us from God and, and space separates us from God because now there's this chasm between us and God. And uh, to where throughout the generations, people... People do what people do now. They, they they fall in love with things and they forget their creator and they sidetrack themselves with things. Um, to where whereas once we used to walk with him, he now had to re-reveal himself. Um, it's, I think I just made up a word, but he now has to reveal himself to people who who generations ago used to walk with him. And, and see, that that's what it is, is we are so sinful that we can't even come to the Lord without His Holy Spirit's illumination. And so what we have with the Bible is we have the Lord speaking to us, the Lord showing us things that, 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 that we could not know apart from His revelation. Um, and, and obviously the Bible and, and religion, it guides us in morality. Think of... Think of the principles of life. I mean, these aren't things. That, a lot of times, when people say, "Oh, the Bible is you know outdated enough for us," they're not really thinking this one through. Um, the Bible says things like not to murder. The Bible says things like, you know, um, not to sacrifice your children. The Bible says things, you know, like uh, these different things that were to keep a society for their benefit, not for their harm. The same as, as it keeps pe a relationship with Jesus Christ is for your own benefit. It's not like it. I know some pe sometimes in popular culture, it's, it's it's held as though religion keeps you back from your full potential. But on the contrary, it makes you meet your full potential. But I warn you, if you're constantly looking forward and saying, or I'm sorry, looking back and saying, you know, I miss the way... I miss this that I had to give up and this that I had to give up. In essence, you're doing the exact same thing that, that the children of Israel did uh, in the books of Exodus and Numbers. Um, and, and so I highly encourage you to just let the past be the past and, and, and move forward. Um, so it's how God most often reveals his plans and purposes. How do you know what's right and wrong? How do you know um, where you should go in life? And how do you know your purpose? See, but what we try to do is we just open it randomly to a page and we just start reading. And, oh, you know, God's revealing something to us. Let me tell you a funny story. Um, a pastor once said, you know, um, in, in the Gospels where it says Judas went out and hung himself after he, after he betrayed Jesus. Um, and then in another part it says, go and do likewise. And so, you know, the pastor was telling the story. Story where he flips to, to the one he says he reads the thing of John of Judas hanging himself and he flips to the other spot and says go and do likewise. Oh, see what I mean? How 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 really you have to pay attention to the context. You have to have, you have to read it and you have to really study it. Get in there. Pay attention to the context of what's going on. Read the verses surrounding it. You know you don't have to know the original languages to, to figure this out. The the rest of the passages will clarify themselves. Um, like, for instance, the Jehovah's Witness take the, take a very obscure verse in Colossians that says um, that Jesus is the firstborn. And so they take that to mean he's the first created. Uh, and then they ignore all the passages around it that clarify what he's saying. Um, and so when he says firstborn in Colossians, he's not saying that Jesus was the first created. He's talking about his rank, that he's preeminent, that he is the firstborn in, in, um, in, in reference to his, his authority. Um, but once again, the context m makes that certain. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to have, you know, a, a degree in Greek or Aramaic or Hebrew or anything like that to, to get the Bible. Um, but if you're wanting more on the Bible, we've uh, uh, we've got an Old Testament and New Testament class. Both are on my YouTube, um, and we also uh, are going to be uploading an Understanding the Bible class which is basically hermeneutics 101, but I know a lot of people don't know 
what the word hermeneutics mean. But I'm getting off subject. So um, it is God's very words. You have the chance to to talk with the Lord, waiting on God. Sorry, waiting on God is like waiting to cross the road. Think about that. We impatiently. We don't see the see the coming destruction, so we're being so impatient, and we just want to dart across the road. Um, whereas, uh, whereas God is saying, "Okay, wait. There's a car coming," and that's what we have in the Bible: is God conversing with us. So it's uh, it's how we know what to believe, and it, it never changes. It is the standard of Christian living. It, it doesn't change with day to day. It is always this, always the same. The same as God is always the same. He's never taking on uh, a, a different personality. He never wakes up different than he was. You know, he, he, he maintains he's the same person yesterday, today, and forever. Um, he never changes. Um, and how is that important? Because God today God loves you. Let's say you mess up. Tomorrow, guess what? He still loves you. He never changes. Um, and so, how does this apply to our lives? Well, here's a little story. There was a, there was a man in a, in a church who thought that he was supposed to marry this woman. Okay, fine, right? But then he had this claim this special revelation. The only problem was, besides the fact that the special revelation was very subjective and not based on the reliability of the word is that this woman was already married. So how do we know that he was wrong? Well, because the word shows us God's character. Apart from that, we would not know that God is holy. We would not know that God is pure, that God is, is true and, and, and honest. Um, and obviously we would have, you know, Jesus Jesus was, was special revelation, but for those, for his words to not have been written down, it would have been very difficult <laughs> to uh, to know what he had said. Um, mm. So the Bible came from the Holy Spirit. Okay, it was it was God breathed, which means that as people were writing, the Holy Spirit guided them. Although he did not force them into exact verbiage, he illuminated their hearts and their minds and helped them to see what he was saying. And so they said it in, in, in their own way, but they were they were they were inspired, okay? So in other words, it, it, down to the very words we can trust. The Bible contains no errors. Um, even things that are not true, it um, it records accurately. For instance, Satan speaks, okay? And, oh, well, you know, Satan's a liar. Well, yeah, but his words are accurately recorded. Um, also, uh, because the Bible was not written by robots, it still preserves human perspective. The Bible wasn't just thrown down to us. God used people. The same as today he uses people. Could he do something about, the, um, about world hunger? Yes, and he did. He did created the church. Sadly, sometimes the church kind of forgets that. But nevertheless, um, push on past the failures and, and, and learn from it. What can you do today as a Christian? What can you do today to change the world? Um, uh, so in Joshua, it says, you know, the sun stood still. Now, we know that the sun didn't really stand still, but the earth did. But from man's perspective, it appeared as though the uh, as though the sun stood still. So is there an error in the Bible? Well, no, no, not at all. It's just simply saying it from a certain perspective. Does that make sense? Basically, if you use your common sense and are not biased against the Bible... But try to go with it with fresh eyes and, and more of an objective um, viewpoint. Um, you'll 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 be able to to, to get what God's saying. Um, and obviously, if you practice proper Bible study, not just making stuff up as as applies, um, you gotta compare the Bible with the rest of the Bible. Let let Scripture interpret itself. When you get to a hard passage, you don't take that passage that one time that it says something as fact. You compare it with the rest of Scripture and see if maybe you are misunderstanding. The Mormons do this in, in Psalms where it says, you know, um, you are all gods or whatever. Um, and I think it's in Psalm 82. And so they take this to mean that, that, that we will be created, we will be made gods. Well, no, that's not what it's saying at all. And the context reveals that. Um, and also you can compare it with the rest of Scripture. Well, what does the rest of Scripture say about us being gods? It never says that. You know, see what I mean? And so it kind of 
a hard passage is clarified. As another example, uh, some people who say that salvation comes, that, that, that water baptism is a sacrament, that it has to be done. Um, and, and so, well, what does the rest of Scripture say? Well, this passage makes it imply, yeah, but what about the rest of Scripture? The rest of Scripture makes it very plain that it's by believing in God. That simple. That's how you earn salvation. We'll talk about that next next lesson. But um, so just because it maintains man's uh, man's perspective doesn't mean it's it's not true. Um, some parts are recorded from man's perspective. Some are recorded from God's perspective. Um, so just just remember to to keep things in its perspective um, and in its context. Um, and also remember that. Overall, it doesn't make it that great of a deal if you misunderstand. What if you actually think that the sun really did stand still? Does it change anything from the story? No, not really. Um, they were fighting, and the day was made longer. See what I mean? Sometimes we can get so stuck on details that we actually overlook the main principle that the Lord is trying to show us. Um, but with that being said, there are no errors in the Bible. Um, and I could get more into this, but... For the the purpose of this course is more broad than to really delve too much into that. So some reasons why people misunderstand the Bible. First off, is only reading certain parts. Like for instance, in Matthew seven it says, "Don't judge," but it goes on to say, "Until you've taken the log out of your own eye." Um, so basically, it's saying judge yourself, and then you'll be able to see rightly how to judge someone else. And then he goes on to say, just in case they miss something, he says, don't throw pearls before swine. Now, why does he say that? Because he's saying some people, and, and he's more referencing wisdom here, don't just give wisdom to anybody. Give it to somebody who is actually going to listen, and when, the, and when it's time, when the correct time is, okay, sometimes people will be acting like a pig, wrong time to give them wisdom, okay? And, and, and so when you're correcting someone, make sure that you're, that you're giving to someone who will actually listen to you and it, that you're giving it at the right time. So read the whole passage. This is how cults are formed, is taking something out of context. Um, <clears throat> secondly, misunderstanding uh, what it is saying or, even more importantly, why it is saying it. Don't just know what the Bible says. Know why it is saying it. Okay, let me give you a few examples. Misunderstanding what it is saying. In Romans 8.28 it says uh, that God works everything to good. And what people have done is they've changed it to where it says all things are for my good. Well, that's not what it says at all. Um, it, it seems like it's more implying about um, accomplishing God's will and, and, and changing us into the image of Christ is more like what it seemed to, seemed to imply. Um, and just because something is good doesn't mean it's necessarily good for us, okay? Um, think of Star Trek, okay? Um, Spock is in is in the ship, and he's you know in with the reactor, I think it is, and he gets poison, radiation poisoning, and uh, he says the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few of the one, um, and 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 think about that. He sacrificed himself. Now he died. So was that good for him? No, he died. But was it good for the rest of the crew, the rest of the ship? Yes, it was very good for the rest of the ship. See what I mean? Um, but not understanding what it is, what it is saying. Uh, also, not understanding what that means. Okay. Um, in in the book of Leviticus, it says, you know, don't get tat don't get tattoos. Is how a lot of modern modern uh, Bibles read. It. But that begs the question: What word is translated as tattoo? What, which takes you to a word which basically means markings, which takes you to a completely different thought, which is actually re related to pagan worship. See what I mean? But in today's culture, we try to we try to tr make people Jewish in that they have to follow the certain Old Testament commands that we like, and if they don't follow those ones, then you know God hates them. Whereas the New Testament gave us further revelation as to how that applies in our lives today. So don't just understand what the Bible says. Understand what it is, what it means. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another example the Jehovah's Witnesses say about Jesus being the firstborn from the dead. What that means is that he was the first raised, and we will follow in suit when we die. It kind of clarifies that. Um, or, or in some cases, and for instance, in Revelations, it talks about him uh, being the firstborn. It's more talking about the origin or the fount of things. 
um, and once again, this isn't this isn't a, isn't a discussion about Jehovah's Witness, but I mean, surely you can understand how um, I'm getting at. You must understand what it is saying and what it means. So the third reason why people uh, misunderstand what the Bible is saying is because they try to make it say what they want. Um, there is no hell because God is love. Well, that's a circular argument if I've ever heard one. Um, you can't, excuse me, you can't just simply take the things that you want and then teach them, and then the rest of the, what the Bible teaches not do it. Like, um, I, there was this one guy, and he was convinced that Jonah was not historical. And so as a result, he just kind of passed over that, that story, even though Jesus referenced it as a historical event. Um, and then uh, in Paul's writings where it talks about women, he didn't like that either. So he just, you know, no, I'm just not going not gonna to listen to that part either. Um, see, because he wanted it to say what he wanted it to say. He didn't want it to change him. He wanted to change it. Okay? Going to the Bible with, with already with an agenda, knowing what you're going to accept and what you're not going to accept. Um, there is no hell because God is love. Uh, so saying in Timothy... Uh, 2, 14 through 17 says, uh, Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to, to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Let me stop there and say this. For a lot of times, people have used Genesis as, and actually the Pentateuch as a whole, uh, um, to, to talk about the age of the earth and evolution, these kinds of things. When it doesn't even talk about those things, it's not even its purpose. Okay, the, uh, Moses is establishing God's sovereignty, the fact that all people felt, and that God ordained one people group, the Jews, out of all that. Okay, And then he shows about God's character, he shows about all kinds of different things like that, and people have tried to turn it into this almost like a history lesson. Uh, and not that the things aren't historical, but you have to understand it in its context. Uh, for instance, oh, we can date the age of the earth to however old because of the genealogies. Except for the genealogies were not meant to be taken as complete. They are meant to emphasize certain points and follow certain families along the way. Even the word son in, in Hebrew doesn't mean direct descendant. Um, for instance, Belshazzar in the book of Daniel is called Nebuchadnezzar's son, even though he was not his direct son. Um, but anyways, I'm, I'm getting off topic again. Verse 16, But avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> but surely you can see why it is so important to understand the Bible uh, correctly. So, confirmation of the Bible. First off, before we talk about anything, we believe the Bible because of faith, not proof. And no matter what happens in the future or what happens in the past, the Christianity has stood for 2,000 years on the on the truth of Scripture. Okay, And it doesn't matter what people say or, or, or believe or whatever, we stand on it by faith, not by proof. However, I do want to take a brief pause and say, J.P. Moreland once, once showed how faith doesn't have to be blind in his book uh, love love your god with all your mind and i agree with him faith is reasonable however i don't go to the to the extent that that a lot of modern scholars do faith is also still faith faith is the belief in things unseen okay we believe we have faith that we will be resurrected is there anything around us to show us that? No, no, there's not. We stand on faith. Because if, if it's already attained, Paul writes about this. It's no longer faith. That make sense? So, um, no one hopes. No one hopes for what is already attained. I think that's not Paul. I think that's the book of Hebrews. Um, but, with that being said, faith doesn't have to be blind. You know, we start making up doctrines and stuff and saying, oh, well, the Bible says this. And, well, how do you know that? Oh, well, you just have to take it in faith. Not necessarily, okay, if, if the does the Bible give something to put that faith in? For instance, Christianity has faith in Jesus. We don't just have blind faith, though. We have faith because he came, died, was resurrected, and gave us a promise he would come back again. We have faith in something, okay? Um, so don't just blindly believe. Like, I'll give you another example. Going back to the whole... Um, um, origin of the world. How old is the world? Well, it's 4,000 years old. 
uh, or was created in 4000 BC. Um, okay. Um, what do you base that on? Oh, why stand in faith on the Bible? Well, the Bible doesn't say that. See, your your bias says that. Okay, and sometimes we'll think that something is disproving the Bible when all that it is is disproving our bias in something. Okay, Does that make sense. So, but with that being said, archaeology, geography, and history all prove Scripture. They're real people, real places, real events. And the thing is, is we may not have complete full revelation outside of the Bible of what happened, and even the Bible itself doesn't give us a full revelation of things. Okay, just gives us a full revelation of what we need to know from God. Okay, um, but uh, you know, like I'll give you an example. Um, the Syrians record the event of Hezekiah, where he's caged up like a bird. You know, um, and 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 he's he's in Jerusalem. The Syrians outside, but. That's all that it says. It doesn't say whatever happened with that. It just says that he had Hezekiah caged up um, in the Assyrian accounts. But then in the Bible, it gives us a more full revelation. Uh, and people would say, oh, well, the Bible is – we shouldn't believe the Bible. Well, yes, except that the Bible has a very objective um, objective view on the stories. The Bible records a lot of people's mess-ups and a lot of people's messiness um, and exaltation to the Lord. Um but keep in mind that as Christians, we are not trying to be objective when we study the Bible. We're trying to understand God's very subjective truth. We're trying to, we're trying to, well, not subjective truth. It's an objective truth. It is, it is truth. Jesus is God is truth. Okay. However, um, we're trying to find out how it applies to us. That is subjective. Okay. So mo most prophecies have come true. Those that haven't are set for the future. Think of the prophet Isaiah who prophesied about King Cyrus conquering Babylon before Babylon was even in power. That's pretty phenomenal. Um, so, uh, the Bible was written over hundreds of years, yet its message is the same. It hasn't changed over the over the thousands of years that it was written. I'm sorry, the, well, 1400 to about, yeah, yeah, to the over a thousand years that it was written, and the message is the same. And people will say, "Oh, well, there's contradictions." Not when you are not when you correctly understand and correctly study. Um, but obviously, like I said, you can make the Bible say anything if you take it out of context. the The Bible was used to condone slavery. It was also used to fight slavery. Which side of the argument are you on? It was used to teach that black people were not real people. It was also used to teach that black people are equal with white people. See what I mean? It just depends. Who is behind the Bible? That's all that, that, that matters. Ooh, not that all that matters, but but that, that's what makes the difference. Okay. Um, for instance, Jim Jones started out teaching from the Bible, but then throughout the course of time, he was able to get people to believe in him, and then he throws the Bible and says, "There's nothing in that. I'm the source of power. I'm I'm who you whoever you want me to be." Um, but anyways, um, so you have to understand the Bible and its context. Now, one more note about cults. Nobody joins a cult. I was watching this, this this documentary on Jonestown. Nobody joins a cult. People think that they're making a difference. People think that they're that they're where they belong. Um, be careful. Keep a close watch on your doctrine. Um, I know people get a little bit uh, about the word theology, but theology is a good word. It's just been misused. You don't have to be, you know, a, a Bible school student or teacher or professor to, to get a grasp on theology. In fact, it has been said that everybody has theology, just to varying degrees. Um, either you have a theology that's kind of folksy and doesn't have a whole lot of basis to it, or you have a good theology. So, hmm. <clears throat> Has the Bible changed throughout history? If you're popular, if you if you're in the know about pop culture, you, you know about Bart Ehrman and Dan Brown. Bart Ehrman wrote a book called Misquoting Jesus, where he said that basically the New Testament is so full of errors, the manuscripts have so many errors in it that we can't even know what Jesus originally said. Dan Brown in the Da Vinci Code said that the Bible is a product of man that was repeatedly changed throughout history. Let's look at that claim. First off, we have over 5,700 copies of the New Testament, okay, dating as far back as the early 100s. Okay, that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, one of our one of our uh, manuscripts is, is from 130 A.D. It's from John. John was written in the 80s or the 90s. So you mean to tell me that in 40 years that the, a major doctrine change happened? 
Mm. There's a there's a there's a uh, there's a, a, a manuscript going around that it, not going around, but that they have maybe found that dates Mark to somewhere around the um, around the around the eighties, I think. Once again, it has not been been authenticated. It has not been revealed to the public. But if this is true, if this claim is true, that's pretty phenomenal. Especially it seems how the Gospel of Mark was written sometime in the 50s. That takes it very close to to the time of the uh, of of the first and second generation of the church. So, it takes it to the first and second generation of the church. Um, so. Uh, the early church fathers cited scripture so much that we could compile almost all the New Testament just by their writings. Okay, we have so much of the New Testament that, of course, there are errors in the, in the in the copies of the manuscripts that we have. Of course, because we have so many. But not all those copies have errors in the same place. By comparing them with one another, we can understand what's said for the most part. There are some spots that. that that um, we're not 100% sure on, but nothing that changes doctrine. For instance, in John chapter 8, where the woman's getting stoned, or that they want to stone the, stone the woman. Well, you, it, does, does taking that out take anything away from, from the message of the gospel? No. Even if you go through and take away all the questionable verses, which aren't that many, still doesn't change anything. The, the ending of the gospel of Mark is another, is another part. Um, but anyways, the Old Testament that the Jews had was almost exact with the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found. Okay, um, the, in the in in a, in a com monastic community called Qumran, um, they they were very diligent with with copying and scribe and scribe uh, scribing copies and whatnot. And it was exactly in in the 1900s, um, I think in the, like the 1960s or so, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and they matched exactly with the other. Um, with, the, with the rest of the Old Testament that, that we had had. In other words, it had not been changed or modified o over the course of time. Now about the New Testament, it couldn't have possibly adapted that fast. It was quoted from the hundred, or we have copies from the hundreds on. It was only written in the in, in the uh, 40s and on. The earliest book dates to in the 40s. Most of them date to the 50s and the 60s, and some of them date to the 80s and the 90s. So you mean to tell me in that short of a time, it drastically changed that much? Very unlikely. Then you can see that it really doesn't change that much. What happens is the church develops into the empire and you know some different things happen that some have different to comment about and moral of the story, then the church started, started gradually changing. Uh, but either way it didn't change in the content of the Bible. That stayed the same. It's just how they understood the Bible. And some people would take this to be relativistic. So it doesn't really matter what the Bible says. It matters how you relate to it. No, no, no. We're trying to understand what the Bible says. What, I, what, I, what all that that means is that some people misuse Scripture. It does not mean that it doesn't matter what it says. Okay, It very much matters what, what it says. That's why we study, to understand what it says. Um, so we have found little to no variation among the text with no major doctrine change with those parts that actually have uh, variation. I already talked about John 8. Um, so any errors are due to the amount of copies. So no, the proof says it stayed the same. So when we look at these two quotes, the Bible is a product of man that was repeatedly changed throughout history. Well, a product of man, that would be, there would be something that you have to take by faith. They cl the Bible claims it was from the Lord. So either you believe all of it, or you believe none of it. That's a matter of faith. However, uh, repeatedly changed throughout history, there is no proof for that. Um, Bart Ehrman's and misquoting Jesus is full of errors? Not so much. And in fact, the contradictions, allegedly, can be explained, um, obviously, if so someone is just diligent to actually study rather than already form an opinion. Um, if you want a real quick introduction to that, it's called Can We Trust the Gospels by Mark Roberts. Check it out. Um, so what translation is right for me? Get what you understand. Honestly, get what you understand. The most important thing is that you actually understand what you're reading. Um, I know some people, you know, KJV only. Well, yeah, except if you don't understand the King James, and then... <laughs> so, um, there, there are two then, two different kinds of a translation. There's word for word, and then there's thought for thought. And then there's the Jehovah's Witness Bible, which is just kind of make it up as you go along. Um, so anyways, word for word is basically where they take the original manuscripts, copies, and they um, they try to um, translate it as close in 
in, in, in wording to the original manuscripts. Then there's thought for thought, which bas basically says, this is what I think the idea and the flow is here, and I'm going to put it in a little bit easier to understand verbiage. Um, some some um, examples are, for a word for word, almost exact, it would be the New American Standard Bible, the English Standard Version. But remember, these are still, a translation at best is still just a translation. There will be mistakes in any translation you get. Then there's an NIV, which is pretty much in the middle of the road. And in fact, if you get the uh, 2011 version, very good, very good version. In fact, I hold it up there with the ESV. It's just, it and the NASB, it, it's very good. Um, if you have the version from the 80s, it's not very good. It's, it's actually more towards thought for thought. But the 2011 NIV is, 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 is pretty close to word for word, except it's very readable and understandable. Um, for, a, for a thought for thought, you have the New Living Translation or the NLT or the Message. Uh, those are both uh, um, thought for thought. But it's good to have, you know, if you have a phone, you can get Bible apps that will have it in different translations and just skip through them and kind of read it in different translations. So about the Jehovah's Witness, it's called the New World Translation. They have some other interlinears, but their main one is the New World Translation, and basically it is a terrible translation. First off, they translate it according to their bias rather than according to what the scripture actually says. A Greek word can mean many things, or sometimes one, so let me re-say that, sometimes one Greek word translates to many different English words because it's not, there's not going to be a direct overlap, the same as anybody who translates from Spanish to English will tell you. There is no direct overlap. It's kind of like this. There's enough overlap where you can understand where you can understand each other, but there is still nuances that are not grasped in each, okay? And then not every, uh, so one Greek word can translate to many English words. One English word can translate from, can translate many Greek words, okay? Um, and then what they do also is they just throw in words. In Colossians it says Jesus created all things. They put other in there. Just randomly throw it in there. In John 1.1 1, 1 it says, um, the, uh, the word was with God and the word was God, they say the word was a God. And the reason why they say that is because in Greek it doesn't have the definite article. But anybody, any Greek, any, any first year Greek student will know Caldwell's rule, which basically says that it doesn't need or ever have the definite article if it's the predicate of the sentence and not the subject. And any Greek first year Greek student can tell you that that is exactly what's happening there. So what did they do in recent things? They say, oh, no, no, we understand that, but um, the context governs. Well, evidently the context go doesn't govern because it clearly, clearly is saying that Jesus is God. Um, and then later on in the verse it says that John was sent from, from God, and it once again doesn't have the definite article. So is it saying that John was sent from a God? Well, of course not. That's just nonsense. No longer is the Bible monotheistic then. It would be polytheistic. Um, and by the way, if Jesus isn't fully God, then it's polytheistic anyways. Whereas Isaiah makes it very clear, there is no God before me or after me. No one has ever been formed. I am the only God. But I'm getting he heated up um, and kind of getting off topic again. Um, so it, basically it is a very bad translation. Um, and by the way, no, there is no scholarship that supports the Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible. I think that's very important. No Greek student, no 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 theologian, Jehovah's Witness are alone in that they and they also, by the way, um, contradict every historical biblical doctrine there is. You name it, they've they, they they've they've um, contradicted it. So uh, the Mormon's Bible is unprovable. Besides the fact that it plagiarizes from from the from the prophets in, in our Bible, and that it contradicts itself, yes, you heard me right. The Mormons' Bible contradicts itself. Um, actually, the Quran does too, but that's a little bit off topic. Um, but even if it didn't, it is still unprovable. You have two people, one who went out to the woods and got this magical tablet and this device that allows him to read it, and then this other guy who, who helped him write it all down or whatever. So you have, if on the basis of that one testimony with this other guy following along suit, you form an entire religion? That just doesn't even make sense. It's unprovable. Not only that, but it's, it, it's not scientific. It, it, apply the scientific method to it. You're not going to get anywhere. And it's not historical. You have no basis for that. So, 
the Catholics uh, add some books. Now, the books that they add have always been called... Um, oh, hold on. Have always been called um, uh, church books, okay? But, however, they were never seen as um, having authority. They were never seen as inspired by the Holy Spirit. And um, so, as a result... Um, they uh, they were they were not really ever included in scripture. However, when after the Reformation, um, there was you know with with the with the split going on there, um, the the Catholic the the Pope the Pope decided to include it. Um, it basically was a power play to reestablish himself as the authority. Um, but if you read those books, that's fine. Just don't hold them to the same equiv equivalent of um, of. Uh, the rest of scripture now or I should say scripture um, they're under it just like a, a prophecy given in church whenever the gifts of the spirit are used it has to be in accordance with the Bible now um, I do want to say a quick note though Christianity cannot be united with other religions because they have a different different way of way of getting to heaven and they have a different way of the, a different version of God I'll give you an example of different religions. Mormonism is not Christian. It is a different religion. Jehovah's Witness is a different religion. Buddhism is a different religion. However, different denominations can be united. Okay, let me give you an example. The Assemblies of God can be united with Church of Christ. Okay, Baptists, any denomination of Baptists, can be united with uh, Catholics. Will they have to be a little bit flexible? Yes, they'll have to be a little bit flexible, but they can do it. It's called ecumenism, the ecumenical movement. Um, so, <clears throat> we use the same Old Testament books as the Jews, and the New Testament was voted both by a, a, a leader, separately decided what books would be in it, and then the church council also decided the same books separately, but the same books. Um, so they both came to the same conclusions. And... Uh, um, it's important to note that they didn't decide these. They 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 based they 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 came to the realization of what was inspired, uh, and we'll pick up with that next next uh, video. I'm kind of pushing 47 minutes, so I need to stop it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll finish up with the Bible next. Uh